Okay, everybody. Hello. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. It is time for, <clears throat> excuse me, I better clear my throat because we've got some big things happening. It is time for Free Tip Friday. And I'm Kate Richburg, and today we are continuing that fantastic project that we had with Emily uh, last week, her fringe project, her beautiful lantern piece. So we're going to be talking all things fringe today. Um, we're going to be talking about the piece that Emily is making and adding the fringe to it. And then we're also going to talk some uh, about some other ideas for fringe with seed beads. So it's great to have everyone here. So let me see if I can see all of you. So bear with me here for just a moment while I get myself on the screen. There we are. And Emily, you're on already. <laughs> so let me unmute. There we go. All right. You just got your earrings on and I put you right on. Hey, Em. Hey, Kate. How are you? I'm all right. How are you Good. doing? I'll move that camera down a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's all right. I'm also multi-screening myself. Um, I wanted to have a iPad screen also going because I can't. Right. Because you like it. <laughs> Look at us with our cute short hair. Look how cute I we are. I get kind of frustrated when I can't see what's going happening. You know, yeah, no, I'm with you. I love your short hair. I love my short hair. I was ready to go back to it a while back, <laughs> and I was waiting to get through pandemic enough to be able to go to a hairdresser. And I had to find a new hairdresser in my new neighborhood, which I did. Yeah. And she's very safe, and it was a big salon, and I was the only person there. Oh, that's and great. The last time I went, there was just me and one other client at the other end. And so four people in the building at one time. So it was very, you know, right. Quiet very and, well, and socially healthy. distanced and good. Yeah. Socially distance. Yep. Yep. And she's a lot of fun and, and uh, it's been great fun getting to know a new hairdresser, which I always I have, know. Time with, you know, I mean, it, and yeah. it's somebody you see regularly. It's not your dental yeah. hygienist, you know? No. Um, and your hairdresser is like, you know, like a big relationship. Yeah. You know, yeah. it yeah. is for sure. Yeah, well, no, I, I am I, still, I yeah, You're I'm still COVID cutting. I still am. So I gave I'm myself great. a little bit of a haircut yesterday. So, yeah. but I just pretend, I just pretend that <laughs> I'm a hairdresser and I do this and then I do this with the scissors and then I do this and I do this with the scissors. Mine and, seems to be all about product uh, these well, days. Well, yeah. Uh, if you have the right product, or, you know, some, some good yeah. to put in my hair that uh, makes it better yeah. or something. Yep. It looks good. It looks well. We look amazing. Well, I like I like the idea that the warmer weather is coming and it's going to be cooler, and I don't have to wear a ponytail. I've I've mm -hmm. I I think I'm done with those for a bit, but I have a new style yeah. that I'm going to grow into now. So I'm I'm working oh. towards a new goal. We're working on it. Well, yeah. I like the uh, it shows off the earrings for sure. It does. So it does. Well, like at least when you're not wearing a mask, which masks have it's true seriously cut but, into my earring sales um i've got mine sitting right here no, you know i uh, <laughs> well since i'm at work i still have it no. but i still wear lipstick under my mask i will I say do i do too i do i mostly wear a gloss with some color i'm not a i'm not as big a lipstick wearer as you are you know me um it's i'm wearing right my computer glasses today oh yeah i see your mac i see you i'll mac. just i'll just do it right now yeah. Um, I'm wearing my computer glasses because I am at computer distance to be able to see what's happening on the screen. But normally right. I'm wearing my other frame. So, yeah. Um, but I thought it was Mexican shirt day today. Um, it is. You should have texted me earlier. I and, wore uh, at my favorite polka dotted scarves. But um, had I known it was Mexican top day, I would have worn mine. But. Is it blusa or blousa? I don't know. I think, I think it's Lusa. maybe hmm. I'm going to say my Mexican top. Well, I wanted to call it by the right thing, you know, so I know. Love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. We have quite a collection. Emily and I have collected those over the years and sometimes together. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I'm, I'm kind of on the hunt for some new ones, although I have a, um, I have a line yeah. on a neighbor on a, on a international sort of store here and, in the hood um, that it might be just the place to uh, oh store. i like that story yeah. i like it oh my mom is saying it's blusa is my blusa. mom is saying oh thank blusa. you 
Good. Yeah. I thought so. I thought that was right, but I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> yeah. So I always like to be there. As soon as I cross the border into Mexico, when we go on vacation or we go in, on business or whatever, all of a sudden my Spanish comes back. But, um, you know, you I, know. I thought at one point during the pandemic lockdown that really is to be a really great time to learn language because, you know, you don't have anything else to do. But turns out I did have a lot to do. I mean, I moved. I had to find yeah. some new places, outlets for, to sell my jewelry. Um, I was working with you a little bit. There yeah. was plenty of there was plenty of things to do. Um, I, I still have I still have life goals of having a second language under my belt. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what that's going to be yet, but um, Spanish yeah. would be probably a pretty good one. Yeah, it'd be a good one. My Spanish isn't too bad. It's not real great, and my French is also about the same. So, but you know. <laughs> I like that I, when I listen to people speak Spanish, I pick up things and I understand, yeah. but it's hard for well, me. Because we're California girls. That's why. Yeah. 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 It's true. We've been around it kind of a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Gita's saying you. Danish. Gita's Danish is probably pretty good. Well, and Gita, <laughs> I have to tell you, in my mind sometimes, and I, have, I don't say it out loud, you might, but in my mind sometimes I say, oh, my freaking banana, just because <laughs> of... <laughs> of you using that term and i think it's really great and i i don't know what it sounds like in in danish dutch danish um danish. but i i kind of want to hear you say it in your language and see if it sounds like right i think it sounds so because right. it sounds it's a great thing to say you know um it's an awesome mostly yeah. when you're just flabbergasted by whatever shenanigans someone else is doing. <laughs> going on right exactly <laughs> well that being said, so th nice chat. Um, nice chat. See you later. <laughs> chat. See you later. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, let's, uh, so we've got some stuff to get to today. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, and Gita says that's her, that's her English saying. She made, uh, I love my freaking down. She said she, uh, that's her English saying. So she, I think, only says it on Anglaise anyway. <laughs> I, um, really love it. I, it, I think of it yeah, often it's a good one. you know it is well we've got Gita doing uh it's just that I haven't felt like I've seen you so I see you and I'm all let's catch up with all the other hundred people that are watching us on Facebook so I guess we should actually get to it so if you're watching this on replay thanks so much for sticking with us you guys we appreciate it um scroll forward scroll forward <laughs> Scroll for yeah, keep moving the slider forward. We're getting there. We're landing this plane. We're eventually going to land this plane, as we say to our friend Jessica. Land the plane, Jesse. I know you've got a point. Um, so I've seen in the chat, Emily, that people have been making your lanterns, I know. and they're super stoked to uh, a learn the French, which I am as well. And so we're going to look at the fringe for that lantern. And we're also, I think you've got a bunch of things that you're going to share. I do. With I us have as well. a couple of trays. I shared a little mm -hmm. bit last week of mm -hmm. the mustard fringe, which I can do mm -hmm. that again, because it does have mm -hmm. some, it definitely has some points to share. Um, mm -hmm. You know, fringe, I've always said that fringe is like the dessert, you know, you've done all the hard work of all the other stuff and the fringe is kind of the fun part at the end. Right. And it, right. it can be, it can also be the frustrating part because you're dealing mm -hmm. with a lot of dangly bits and you're pulling thread through and things get tangled up and get taught, you know, things tangled. So it can be a little bit frustrating in some of those technical mm -hmm. aspects of it, but I do think it's the, it's kind of the icing, the frosting on the cake. It's the fun part. Right. Um, and right. so it's the place where you get to do more expression than, than most of the places that you you do your jewelry. Yeah, it's like it's like stringing little mini necklaces, really. Yeah, right. Yeah. Kind of. Like so let's get to your demo cam then. Let's sure. talk about the fringe then for this project. Okay. And then let's move into maybe like the last I don't know fifteen minutes of our broadcast to look at some of your fringe um, that you've already made on some different yeah. pieces. Sure. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to add your camera <clears throat> here, and I'm going to and it's go ahead and spotlight that. Sorry. It's it not... is vertical. Okay, give me uh, a moment. Yeah, me... I'm going to remove it. I just, uh, okay. I'm actually going to remove you um, from the studio, and you're going to have to rejoin it. Yeah. I think. Oh, no, here we go. Let me see if I can add it here real quick. Yep. I think we've got it. Bam. 
It did okay. it last week, and I, I was hoping it was going to work again this week. So Yep, and it did. Yeah. Yahoo! So, All right, so let's take a look, um, and I'll have the sample here for everybody to look at, but let's take a look at where we left off with you from last week. When last we spoke. Yes, when we were last together. When we were last together, we did the assembly of this guy. And um, I have to tell you, I when I was working on this for you, Kate, I, a couple of times I needed to kind of stand back and look at it. And one thing that worked really great was to actually put it on a pencil, which yeah. allowed me to like, you know, kind of look at it without being right up on it with my fingers, um, my big giant fingers. So sometimes if you need to ha hold something separately, this is kind of a nice way to do it. You could use your awl too, I suppose. Yeah, the but tip of your awl, yeah. The nice thing about that is I don't have to worry about poking anything and having any problems. So, so with, with brick stitch earrings, and I'm going to take a little step back just as a, as a reminder um, moment with brick stitch earrings, we start with a base row and that base row can be an odd number or an even number of beads. It doesn't matter. The time where it's nice that it be an odd number. And that means that translating to an odd number of beads when you are about to fringe is, is, this is the good moment to have that odd bit. If you have an odd number, it's easier to plan your fringe. So most of the time when I'm making a traditional brick stitch earring, hold on, hold that thought. Let me grab something I can show you. The base row is also the top of the fringe. So the fringe all emanates oh, I see. Okay. from this base row. Gotcha. Yeah. So having that odd number of base row beads does make your life, I think, a little easier and a little more symmetrical. You know, when you do flower arranging or, I don't know, I'm sure there's a bunch of other places. When we think about necklaces with centerpieces, um, it's so much easier to have sort of an odd element, right? You have that centerpiece and then, then pairs going away from that on either side. But it ends up having an odd number of elements. That actually makes things look a little more symmetrical. If you have mm -hmm. an even number, what you're gonna do is have two in the middle that are the same. So then even then you're working outwards is gonna maybe gonna look a little awkward. It's not gonna look as smooth at that spot, right? So we have a long one kind of in the center. Something That's else. a real pretty earring. That's really yeah. pretty. That's pretty colors and it's a super easy one. So here's, here's another nice thing about this fringe. And this is just one way to, calculate the fringe. I made the changes to the lengths of the fringe so that they would taper with a long in the center, shorter on the sides plan. And I did that by changing the number of these purple beads. Okay. Everything else in that fringe stayed the same. So the pattern from this four, three millimeter fire polish down to the end is all the same in each fringe. The thing that changes is the length of these purple beads. I think on the first fringe, there's two, and then it goes to three and five, and it kind of continues to graduate down till I got to the center, and then I kind of work my way back up. So in, in essence, I really only had to de de design half this fringe if I wanted my fringe to be symmetrical. There's no, the bead police will not come to your house and say, your fringe is not symmetrical, you must quit. Um, but this is an easy way to make that happen. And I chose that purple bead to extend this color way that's coming down, right? And then gave myself the luxury of repeating this color way kind of in a mirror image top to bottom as well. So all I did was change the number in the, those, those rows. And this is something you can plot out easily on, on paper with paper and pencil. And I'm, I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Um, this is a and much what I, idea. Oh, and I, yeah, and I see Emily, and I think you mentioned it before, but I really wanted to reiterate that color blocking that you did. I mean, there's not a lot of, a lot of the design is translated in the colors, is that in as, as much the colors that you used mm -hmm. as the, the beads and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's really, I don't know if I'm putting that any, you know, I, I think it's really fun to play around with patterning and with how you choose to use your colors. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, brick stitch earrings are a staple of Native American beaters. Um, they've been around for a very long time. Brick stitch in and of itself is older than beading in, in this continent um, because they found them in Egypt and, and other places. But brick stitch is probably, probably emanates from Africa and from that continent because of the looping on the threads style mm -hmm. and passing through the beads multiple times like peyote stitch does, but they both mm -hmm. go back really, really far. Um, mm -hmm. so there's not a, you're not stepping on any cultural toes using this particular stitch or even making the style of earring particularly. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I think was, was interesting to note here is that one way to add dimension to this piece to make these fringes flare out a little bit was to incorporate those fire polish beads. And fire polish is really nice because it's easy to work with. It's got big holes, um, comes in lots of sizes uh, and right. lots of colors. And I did match the, the fire polish to the Delica. This is all done in Delica beads. So and I, I think the fire, fire polish, polish Delica. also gives it kind of a vintage look too and yeah. because it's That's such great. a it's kind of a you know it's been a bead staple for so many years yeah. and a lot of this like seed beading and stuff we've seen in the victorian times like the the french beaded flowers and things like that so um yeah. it's a perfect palette to kind of put your own spin on for sure yeah no i think fire polish is great for this i I'm not particularly as much a, as a, of a Swarovski person as some people are. Mm -hmm. I like Swarovski, but it's a little bit too shiny for me sometimes. Too mm -hmm. sparkly. I, I like yeah. them, the slightly muted sparkle of fire polish. And fire polish is a little bit softer um, in finish around the holes as well. And sometimes mm -hmm. with beading, seat beading thread, Swarovski can be problematic. Um, and that'd be the time where you'd want to move over to using fire line. Mm -hmm. um, for your beading because it's much more durable against abrasion. Right. And so this is just a mix of um, three and four millimeter fire polish. Um, and, and do, do keep in mind when you're, when you're doing fringe where you're adding more bigger beads, not just seed beads, um, do keep in mind that there's a, there is sort of a comfort level of weight, you know, um, mm -hmm. right. we get, we get right. these lantern beads to begin the lantern earring to begin with in the one D version of it. It's very light, even with the fringe, it doesn't have much weight to it, but once we triple that up and put it here, it's a much right. bigger earring. Not not an earring. It's a little weighty. Um, all day. Yeah. It might be comfortable with for a little while, but it would be a, a a hard one to wear all day. So I think this makes a much more interesting pendant. Okay, so odd number of beads in your base row. If you're building your fringe down from that base row, gives you that opportunity to have that center point that's longer or shorter but centered um, in the middle. And it for me, it's much more typical that I tend to do that odd number in that base row than an even number. But it, you you do you, you're, you're most welcome to, to play around with that even number, okay? So the fringes that I built on this particular sample, I continue to use the thread that I had from my working thread. I didn't build in a new thread. You could make an argument for building in a new thread, putting in a new thread to hang the fringe from so that if the fringe happens to break, the rest of it is not involved. But we've woven these threads in through so much, I'm not really worried too much about this. Mm -hmm. um, and we have these three panels, mm -hmm. three sides to this. I left them open between the base row, the uh, last row here. And I did that for a purpose. When I made the first pairs of these, I had to be very careful that I, when I did my fringe, I did not involve the other sides because I wanted to do different fringes on different sides and be able to have different sure. looks. And I wanted to make sure I didn't involve those, but I did looping fringe and I'm going to, Kate, I'm going to bust out a, a sample a little early. Hold on a moment. Okay. And let me know, cause I've got your samples here, Em. So sure. if there's anything you want me to show, just let me know. No, I'm just going to bring in this guy cause this has a really good um, looping fringe. That um, is a gorgeous earring. Isn't that Look fun? Look at that, you guys. It's so just two colors. It's two colors, Em, right? Three colors. Or three colors. Yeah. Oh, it's this just stunning. At doing a feather pattern or a feather design. Uh -huh. Which, um, sorry, this has a um, very dark brown matte bead 
which is hard to see because I don't have quite enough light, but I think you can actually see it maybe. Um, yeah, so when you hold it up close. And then a matte brown, and then there's kind of a root yes. beer transparent, and then a white. And for me, That's this was really coming up pretty. with a, a feather pattern that I thought definitely had a nod to the Native American beaters, but also was just had that kind of design to it that I liked and, and I was playing around with. So in this case, the fringe loops from one base row over to the next. And then I went through that base row, came down and looped back. So it really just works its way back and forth. And I handled the center by making a fringe that only goes out of that center bead. So that center base oh, bead has sure. a loop of its own, right? Instead of having um, a loop that passes from one side to the other. So looping fringe actually happens pretty quickly. It moves along kind of rapidly. It's nice in that aspect. Um, you know, there's all kinds of fringe we can do, but looping is one of my favorites. And it's, it's definitely one that I think happens fairly quickly. I did play around a little bit in here, and I know this is tough to see. I'll, I'll try and send you a better picture of these, Kate, um, where I use some color of some of the matte dark brown is kind of coming down into the fringe. So oh, so it has a little bit of an ombre effect to it. It does. It's How's really that? nice. So Gita has a quick question on that one, M. Do you go back through and reinforce the loops? I don't. Okay. Shocking, I know. Shocking. So fringe, part of fringe's beauty is that it's it's got a lot of fall and a lot of drape to it. Um, so when you when you pull your fringe threads tight, you want to make sure that you've left enough room for that fringe to swing and move. And I have I've never had a fringe break on this style of earrings. Um, and I've often thought that in the scope of how we talk about how jewelry takes abuse, um, that if we start at the top and work our way down, that's the least amount of abuse is earrings. And then necklaces mm -hmm. don't take very much abuse. But when we get to bracelets, bracelets take a little bit more abuse, right? They get banged around on tabletops. They catch on your sweater sleeve as you put your arm in your sweater. Um, they go through all kinds of, they get wet, they have all kinds of, of use put to them. And then even if we go down to the point of having an anklet, um, which now that we're coming, coming back into summertime, those get to be popular again every summer, it seems, um, that at an anklet, an anklet is something that tends to get worn all the time. It never gets taken off. And so it, it gets have socks pulled over it. it. It has pant legs brushing on it all the time. It might have be, you know, rubbed over with a towel, getting out of the shower or the pool. Um, it goes into bed, into sheets and gets rolled around all night long. So I think from top to bottom, um, the most abuse things are the things at the low end and less abuse things are the things at the top end. So earrings tend to not take as much abuse. Um, so no, I don't double the thread in the, in the earring and they have so far stood me well. Okay. Yeah, they're really pretty. Thank you. And is your thread double to start? It's not, right? No, you just do no. a single. Yeah, I just do a single. So mm -hmm. with um, an up and down fringe like this style, right, uh, where we go um, a, a straight fringe, a non-looping fringe, it does mm -hmm. actually have two threads in it. We go down. Right, because you've gone down and gone up. Yeah. Right. Nice. Um, I'm going to pull up a picture real quick, Kate, of... Um, the sample that I sent you. And okay, and I've got this one here. Let me actually, I'm gonna add this into the demo, the sure. into the stream here. So bear with me here just a second. And I'm gonna highlight this for a second here while you're pulling yours up there, Em. Yeah. But you can see here's Emily's, the piece. And like she was saying, that looped fringe, if we, kind of get to the center of it all <clears throat> here with this piece. And I think this is kind of what you were getting at, Emily. Mm -hmm. You can see that each side is uh, independent of the other. So you can see how Emily started in the center. There's that little, little bead that has the pico. And then she's done looped fringes so there's a small fringe a bigger fringe and then that final fringe with the drop
right there. And you've repeated that then, Emily, on all three sides. Is that correct? That is correct. The other tassel yeah. has a slightly different fringe. Which I'll, I'll have right here. So this guy in real life. And let me do it like this. This seems like kind of a good way to do it. And then I'll, I'll bring it back to you, Em. Okay. But I thought this was a good way to kind of, so that everybody could see this. So this fringe, you can see they're all coming out independently, like so. And it looks like, M on all three corners, that's where you put three legs of fancy fringe, right? You're correct. And then in the middle between each of them, that fringe is all the same. It has different lengths, though, it looks like. Right, a little bit of a different length. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys can see that there. But um, so that's how you tackled those. I'm going to put it back to your demo cam. Okay, and hold then, on. Uh, yep. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just waiting for something to print out. I no worries. Uh, even easier. I just I'm going to highlight on. this. There we go. You're back on. Okay. So this now I have one to look at, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, there you go. So looping fringe and straight up and down fringe, right? The straight up and down fringe has some picots at the end, and it's got different lengths, again, built on that first row of beads coming down. And that gives us that, that length difference, so that stepping down in size. Mm -hmm. And I used all the same beads as what's up top with adding right. in some um i think there's a six millimeter rondelle very pretty and those drops with a little bit of that silver kind of gilting on the outside yeah so that marine it's so pretty. pretty yeah right and the antique silver um daisy spacers and this is a place a really great place if you're going to use daisy spacers do the smaller ones do it like a three millimeter um, as opposed to a four. Uh, it still will show, gives you all that effect, but you're saving a little bit on weight and length. Okay. Um, oh, here's my other, here's my notepad. Before I do that, um, I did a little drawing because I, you know how I like a little chart of some sort. We do. A little, a little Emily's chart. A little <laughs> Emily's chart. So again, that base row kind of working across. This I just did five beads for illustration purposes. So when I go to build this, um, my thread might be coming down and out of that base row. And I'm gonna pick up my beads and build it straight across all the way around, go up the next base row, the other side, loop over. So there's beads up here, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm ignoring those, loop down, come through again, go right over and out. Put some arrows on here so you know which direction we're going. Right? Loop down. This will give me a place to come out and make a fringe. So once I'm done with my fringes, I'm going to work my thread up into my beadwork to bury that end. But I find that that looping over, this is the point where uh, if I'm coming down, I add my beads, skip the bead at the end, go back up, and just loop right over to that next base row bead. When you're doing that looping over stage, this is the point where you're going to adjust the tension of the thread on your fringe. And this is the point where you want to be a little bit mindful. You pull it too tight, you're going to have fringe that sort of has, has a mind of its own, sticks out. What you want is virtually no thread to show here, but you still want to have a lot of drape. So it's a little bit of a balancing act at that point. Come right down, do my fringe, skip the last bead, go back up. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, okay? Back down, out, skip the last bead and back up, okay? And then repeat across. So this gives me a fringe that has like a fancy ribbon cut end, right? When they, mm -hmm. the ribbon, Kate knows how to do this, fold the ribbon in half and kind of cut out that middle piece. Mm -hmm. so you have two tails kind of building from it. So the first one I showed you has that looping fringe. It's really all gonna be within that loop space. So the longest loop is the first one and it gets shorter after that. 
you might also do um, fringe where it's all the same length and you'd play around maybe with what's inside the fringe. There might be mm. some elements inside the fringe. You could even right. have shockers. You could actually use beads inside the fringe to have different shapes built out, right? So we could have some mm -hmm. straight across, we could have some fringes that come up or go the other way that go down. That's cool right. too. And also we can do um, fringe that decreases um, from the edge, uh, increases from the edge to the middle. So a straight fringe that gets longer. And I really messed up that guy, but it has that kind of a, of an effect, right? Right, right, like a like a teardrop or a, like a diamond. Yeah, so. a pointed a pointed effect, and mm -hmm. really every variation within all of those. You know, we could we could take a I'll just do five again, just to save time and energy here. You know, and that's this is really coming into what you mean, Emily, about this is kind of the fun designing part, right? Because yeah. you could take even like a really simple base, like you did with that first earring, something that's really simple, and then have all of the fancy pants stuff happen um, in the fringe section. Yep. You know, with that odd number, I could also do this. So I not only have long and short, but I have, I build two right. of those inside. Right? So like a dagged I could, edge. Yeah, I could really do a, a tremendous amount of different things. We could uh, we could do that opposite too. We could mm -hmm. do that with um, long on the outside, shorter on the inside. What would that look like? So long, short, long, short, long. So that would give us something similar, but going the opposite direction, right? Mm -hmm. Really it pretty. It's kind of an effect. Kind of fun. And then of course you play around with adding things like bugle beads, right? Mm -hmm. Where bugles can give you lovely patterns. And I know you've gotten some new ones lately, which I love, Yeah. right? We could also um, end each of these fringes with a big teardrop bead, which would really show off the fact that these are at different levels and different heights. Uh, it could be dramatically different. And most of the time, I do my length lengthening, change of lengths up top near that base row. And that mm -hmm. just is easier than trying to plan it out down here sometimes. But you can you can use both both or or either or both of those systems to give yourself that fringe. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with what's called coral fringe. And Coral fringe kind of gets back, this gets back a little bit to my textured fringe um, bracelets and necklaces. Although I mostly do simple fringe with textured fringe, um, we can absolutely do the coraling style of fringes. And I did not make up that name and I, I am embarrassed. I don't know the artist who called it that initially. But what it's basically to do is to build a fringe that has legs on it. Right, little branches, really. Little branches. So each one of these little legs, make that one stick out a little bit more, has a bead at the end, right? And so as we come down, we stitch down in our beadwork, put on our seed beads, skip the last bead at the end, go back up only part way, and then add some more beads. Add a bead at the end, turn around, go back up, only go up part way. So you build that that coral branches, those coral branches, so that they stick out of your work on different sides. And they can be different lengths. They can be short, they can be long. Mm -hmm. They can also have branches on branches. You can build in a branch on the side of those branches if you want. And it really gives a lot of dimension and a lot of fill to your fringe. Yes, absolutely. And this will begin to push that beadwork out the same way those fire polish do. They'll begin to stick mm -hmm. out more. So if I was going to do coraling, I might think about keeping something kind of on the more monochromatic and simpler color wise, maybe um, let my beads uh, and shapes kind of do that work for me rather than having kind of 
soup to nuts, but uh, colors. But sometimes I want to break that rule too. Um, you know, we talk about color all the time, and and I think I think we all have some personal color rules that we tend to kind of play by, um, and personal uh, feeding rules that we tend kind of tend to play by. One of mine is that I tend to use more transparents altogether and more opaques altogether rather than a big mix of transparent and opaque. Um, mm -hmm. like those two are harder to mix together and it's easier when I don't mix them easier on me and, and feels more successful to me when I don't mix them. And then your mileage may vary a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. You do you as Janice likes to say, yeah. or maybe is that a Kate? Is that a Kate or is that a Janice? I uh, it might be a me. It might be a Kate. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, start a fringe here, and I'm going to start a looped fringe. I'm going to clear my threads kind of out of the way, and I think I'm going to bring my camera in a little bit, and let me see if I can't make a little more light happen down in there for y'all. If I do it like that, I'm blinding myself, but that's okay. There's a price, right? How's that look, Kate? Yeah, it looks good. Uh, yeah. I can see you pretty well. Okay, good. So I'm going to thread my needle back on my thread. This might be a time where you're going to need to cut a clean end on your thread since that thread's been around the block a couple times. I am going to wax like I like to do. You know, waxing is just, um, it's a way to keep the fibers of thread together and does make your beads slide on a little bit easier. Kate likes to wax before she threads her needle. I like to wax after I threaded my needle. We all have our things. Right. Maybe you notice we all, all, those have weird, our... all those weird peculiarities, right? Yeah, we all have our deal. Yeah, we all have our deal. So I'm going to grab okay. some seed beads. And I used a bunch of these purples because I felt like I didn't take advantage of these purples. Um, in the beginning of, of this particular piece. And we were talking about the color scheme that we came up with and calling this hortensia and uh, kind of hydrangea sort of color. And um, mm -hmm. to me, it's very much these colors. Uh, hydrangea bushes with their flowers on it um, all seem to kind of happen in these colors for me. Um, I don't know how Kate feels about it, but I think she likes the same sort of set. I do. I do indeed. And I, did you say this is also one of JP's favorites? Yeah. How her favorite flower is, uh, one of her favorites is the hydrangea. Really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm going to take True a step. Sorry. Um, count these beads real quick. Five, 10, 15. Okay, that's a nice number. I want to have mm -hmm. know what, how many beads I had there because I'm going to repeat it on the other side. And I want to make sure I just have it in my brain that there's 15, and that way I don't have to worry too right. much. Right. Right. And, and then uh, while Emily's counting, I will just mention you guys that this uh, the first part of this broadcast where Emily weaves the lantern portion of these, it wasn't this past Wednesday, but it was the broadcast from uh, the Wednesday uh, before which was um, the 20, or um, yeah, it was the Wednesday broadcast on Wednesday, March 24th, I believe was that, um, was that broadcast. I'm so um, join you on the following Friday. My apologies. Yes. You why had a little bit of a, why you're busy it, making other plans. It is true. So you can go back and watch that broadcast um, and also the lantern earrings that Emily made. Um, you can see the tops of those lantern earrings at the top of her screen right now. Those are uh, also a great way to start making this earring in a 1D and then um, jumping over to the 3D effect. I just love them. I think they have such a really great um, silhouette to them. So it looks like you're ready with yeah. that fringe, M. To uh, so now that is that the that's the outermost fringe, correct? It is. This is the outermost one. I'm going to work my way to the inside. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just going to take my needle up right up that last row of beads. Now, 
Typically with a brick stitch earring, this would be your base row, but it doesn't matter. This happens to be the row that we're on here. Okay. And I'm just going to go right down the very next bead. So I'm going to work my needle in there. And sometimes you have to kind of wiggle around to get in. And this is the point where you want to be a little bit mindful of your tension. If you pull this too tight, and I'll pull it too tight on purpose and show you what it looks like. It doesn't look real great when your fringe is stiff, right? Right. We would like it to be a bit looser, but we don't really want to see thread at the top either. So there's a little bit of a balancing act that I think it takes. And it just takes a moment or two of your time to kind of assess it before you move on to the next fringe. Okay. And so the other thing that you're assessing here, Em, is also mm -hmm. what the length of the fringe is going to be, right? Because this is the longest point of the fringe. Right. On this particular one, this is the longest. Mm -hmm. one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I need some more beads. And, you know, like I said, fringe is fun. This is the fun part. This is the place where you get to play around with this. Um, you know, I made this longest fringe about the same length as the height mm -hmm. of this of this piece. That was just a personal choice. We could have gone longer or shorter uh, either way. And neither uh, any of them would be correct. I'm going to take a stab at 10 on this one and then some beads in the center. And this is, like I said, this is this is the fun, the playtime, the time that you've done all the really kind of pain in the neck hard work. And this is the place where you get to have a little bit of fun. You get to do a little bit of designing on your own, for your own self, and saying, I like it like this. And nobody has to correct you. Or nobody gets to, maybe I should say. Seven, three more. All right, I'm gonna go right over to the other side, back up into that bugle bead, and out. Okay. A little bit like bead embroidery, make sure you go down the next bead before you start building that next fringe. It's super disappointing if you don't. Okay. And these fringes go quickly, um, these looping yeah. style fringes. Um, also, we're not doing so many across that, um, you know, if we have a, uh, if we had a sample where we were doing 12 or 14 rows across um, to add fringes to all those, it would take a, a minute more for sure than what we're doing here. This is a pretty fast one. Okay. each of these fringes kind of nestling in one another, right? Yeah, to and make just a nice I'm little. Down the center. Oops. Yeah. So this is the last fringe for this side. Okay. And I think I did it with just, I'm gonna add a different bead. I'm gonna add one of these true twos. I can. Getting away with it. Getting away with it. So this fringe in the middle is a straight fringe because I don't have anywhere to loop it back to. I could leave it mm -hmm. empty. I very well could do that. Um, and let me just get rid of that bead for a second and show you what that looks like again. So <clears throat> we could make this decision to leave this position empty. I have three looped fringes and we're done. We don't really need to add anything there, but I kind of want to. I, I think mm -hmm. that's a spot. I think it needs something. Okay. And I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change my mind again. Gosh, I'm changing my mind a lot these days. I've been working <laughs> on my yard, and that's been fun to change my mind on 
on the regular. Okay, so this is a straight fringe. It's three beads. Um, one true two, one six millimeter rondelle, and one purple seed bead. To make it so that these beads stay on the thread, I need to skip that um, last bead and then bring my needle and thread back up and back right where it came from through that bugle. So that final that, bead becomes the stopper. Yeah, just a stopper, not a pico. But right. you could put a pico instead too. You if could. You yeah, it's getting a little bit full in there. Mm -hmm. so probably no pico. Right, no pico. No pico. And then I'm going to take my needle and thread back up the beads and secure this thread. Um, I know we talked about this last time. There was a question about knots. No knots in most of my beadwork. Um, so I say I just say no to knots in peyote stitch, in yeah. stitch, and um, in looming. I don't. Yeah, I'm there with you. No knots, Sam. Um, no knots. If you tie knots, you're always going to find yourself in a bind. I promise you. Yeah. Well, it'll block the hole that you're yeah. trying to use. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. I, find if I just no. get myself work myself up away from those fringes and change my direction with my needle and thread a couple times. I'm good. I'm in good shape. I don't have to worry too much. <clears throat> And there's nothing like doing this while everyone's watching. Indeed. Trust me. All right. They look, though, they look so luscious. They do look kind of fun, don't they? I feel like we haven't done anything kind of this wild and kooky in a while. Um, all right. Yeah, they look real pretty. And I'm going to clip off that thread. Then I ended up with about a foot of thread left over, so that's good. I have plenty to work with. And there's my first fringe side. So that was quick, nice. You know, that moved right along with speed and alacrity. And so then you just repeat um, all the way around. Yep. Right? Same you same. just. Yep. I same did thing. On the other one, but I think having the same fringe you know i think there's times where you want to go crazy and have a lot of variety but i think there's mm -hmm. times where it's nice to um have a repeat so that kind of makes mm -hmm. sense and you kind of look at it and it seems to have some rhythm and some understanding on the next one i do i might do that straight fringe right with a pico at the mm -hmm. bottom um mm -hmm. but I, I do like i think having having something this involved in this exotic that we have all that same fringe on each one. Yeah. So for the second one, M, can you show us how you did that other, um, the other style there? Absolutely. I'm going to do it right on this one. Because I do want to get a little bit of time in with your trays. Yeah. So we'll show that and then um, we'll take a look at what you have in your magic trays. The trays that take the place of the jars. I That's right, your jars. We have jars. Yeah. <laughs> and and what thread are you using today? I am using the same KO in the mm -hmm. uh, dark green. Wait, what's it called? Uh, Smoke green, green or something, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, thread color is the thread always shows a little bit in seed bead work. Um, my favorite go-to really is dark gray. That's the one I tend to use the most. Um, I'll tell you another thread that's color that's really useful. Uh, this green has been paying off pretty handsomely. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the KOs that I have on my table, on my bench right this minute, are these guys. And do you have Hana? Lorraine was asking that she says she thinks you like to use Hana. And um, do you prefer it? Or you know, I'm a big I Hana fan, but... I've I it's I've because I like to, that pebble color. I've committed to multiple different threads over the years. Yeah. Um, and I've kind of come back around to liking these filament style threads. And I forget if Hana mm -hmm. has a twist to it or not. No, it doesn't. Hana and Ko are very much the same. 
Right. So Naimo, Hana, Ko, um, uh, even Ceylon has a has a beading thread um, where these are filaments laid together. So mm -hmm. the thread has multiple strands, but they're all just laying together. They're not twisted around one another. They're mm -hmm. not plied like yarn would be plied. Um, I've kind of come back around to liking those, and I like the I like the hand of them, the drape of them, um, the durability yeah. seems to be there. I early on in my beading career, I was extremely concerned that my beadwork was not going to stand the test of time um, and be, um, you know, something that outlived me. I'm, I guess I'm, maybe I'm just not worried about that anymore. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm happy that the thread holds up really nicely and yeah. um, that it seems to, to keep a good, um, um, uh, good flexibility. It stays fresh. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, uh, you use the thread you feel most comfortable with. Yeah. The time I make real strong statements about thread is when we're working with something that needs more durability over the long haul. And then I would mm -hmm. move over to the fire line. Oh, fire, fire line, line yeah. is always going to be stiffer. It's not going to be my favorite thing for this kind of hanging kind of fringe because of that stiffness. Mm -hmm. So I would, um, uh, I would not use fire line for this, but I would use it in some other cases. And, and mm -hmm. you know, everybody's kind of got their own um, inter internal um, thermometer, not thermometer, gauge, is what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. for how, how tight and how firmly they want something to behave. So find the thread that you seem to like the best. Certainly take recommendations off of other people, um, but try out some threads for yourself. So white and gray for me, these are two threads that I use a whole lot. This dark brown, I also use quite a bit. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a color to go with purples, reds, pinks, anything in this kind of mauve or dusty rose kind of mm -hmm. mauve thread, they do, they does a really nice job um, in blending yeah. without, without showing quite so much. I always choose to go for the darker color. Um, which is also like in sewing, you know, the thread doesn't show quite as much if it's a darker color. Yeah. Well, I'm a big fan of Hana Pebble. I just love the color, that kind of nondescript, almost brown, almost gray kind of feeling to it. Right. Um, I feel like I can use it for just about anything. Well, and um, I've used, used filamide thread for a long time, and it also has a warm, cool yeah. gray. Um, yeah, I nice like, yeah, filamide. That's. Option. That's an that's an old school option for sure. Yeah. And so, so you're gonna do this. Oh, go ahead. Silamide's applied thread. It's a twisted thread. Mm -hmm. uh, a little more right. abrasion resistant, um, but could be a little bit stretchier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're gonna show this last yep. style this a, here. This was kind of um this fringe has a combo, a combo of of fringes in it. So I did another length of about 15 beads here. I'm going to put on a fire polish. I'm going to put on oh, five or six seed beads and a teardrop and five or six more seed beads. I'll double check my count here. Let's see, there's six and six. So instead of having this thread, this uh, loop around, loop across, I'm actually going to loop back on itself. So I'm going to go back. Mm. My You're a little out of frame, Em. A little out oh, of frame. Sorry. There back you go. My frame, back at my fringe. And through that bugle bead. And not only will I have a straight fringe, but I have a straight fringe with a loop at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of um, shenanigans you can get into here. Uh, yeah, so only limited to fringe. Fringe. Huh? Only limited to what you can imagine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, straight fringe, but with a loop of beads at the bottom to incorporate that briolette shape, that teardrop shape. Really pretty. Down. Yeah, that's a lot of fun to play around with too. Another place where you can kind of embellish at the bottom of the fringe um, is kind of a fun thing. 
On these next fringes, I had um, not only the seed beads, but a bugle. And some eights. And this one, instead of 15, I'm going to do 10. That was my 15 was my first length. Just an easy number to remember, but you can always write it, jot it down on a little post-it note. And you know, if you make something that you really like, I think it's worth actually sitting down and throwing a post-it note or a little notepad into it and draw it out and keep your count so that you can use it again mm -hmm. um, in something else that you might like. Yeah, I do that within, I do that all my recording on index cards. Yeah. You know me and my index cards. Oh, I know. You I like them. them. I like an index card. You know, I like a notepad. I, I do have, too. I have multiple notepads around. Yes. Um, I was really excited to find these ones that are notepads of blank. Note, uh, it's like a memo pad, but it's just blank, big full sheets of paper. Oh, and a notebook. Oh, nice. Yeah, I really like I them. I like those. And so that one um, you're doing is that if you lift it just a little bit more into frame so we can see that bottom. There we go. Yep. That's a Pico that you are doing there. Correct. And I'll show you that when I get it pulled up. Sure. I'll get the extra threads out of the way. And the Pico doesn't look like much yet. See how they're all kind of laying there together? Mm -hmm. I'm going to manipulate it around just a little bit. Yeah, you Pulling have to coax it. Just just to touch. The Pico. Pardon? Mm -hmm. You there just have to go. coax it into shape. Absolutely. And go down the next one. So I know that was 10. I'm going to shorten up by, I'm going to make it about six. So I want this to get shorter as we're working towards the middle. And then when you, after you reach the center, you just mirror it on the other side. Correct. Correct. So I'm just shortening this part right here, right? So the long one was 10 or 15. This one's 10. Actually, that's not, that's not right. That's more than 15. Um, I'm shortening it here in this set, in this section right here, makes it really easy mm -hmm. to keep track of. Right. But there's no real wrong answer here. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You do you. Mm -hmm. You know, because there are as many fringes in the world as people. It's there's true. A there's a philosoph There's my philosoph philosophical rant for the day. <laughs> Perfect. The world according to Emily Miller. Right. Perfect. So I've done three. Oh, this cool. is seven across. So I'm at the center mm -hmm. right now. Right. So this is right. the middle fringe, the shortest one. And then the others are just repeats going out. I don't have to think about it quite so much. I'm right. You just copy what you've learned done. Yeah. And so, M, would you, um, I don't know if we want to finish this one up or if we just want to go. We're getting to be, have a little bit of short on time. I'm just going to um, finish the last middle fringe and then I'll move on. Okay. All right. Perfect. As much as I want to sit here and finish this off. I know. And I might after we leave you, but we'll see. Yeah, I know. The one thing I, like I always to feel do the same way to um, facilitate stringing up this fringe. And this is just a technical thing here is my fringe beads are all on my thread and I'm going to pull it taut by holding it with my other other hand. Then I'm going to bring my needle in and remember how we do this when we loom kind of aiming to the upper part of the tube, the tunnel of the holes of the beads. And mm -hmm. then pull it through. It'd be really nice if you didn't split your threads. Right. So we're not splitting our threads. Exactly. So you get a nice smooth pull when you pull right. your thread through. Right. And through. even one as well. And it allows you, right. you know, once in a while you'll miss a bead in the fringe and you'll have your thread mm -hmm. on the outside and you go, oh, you need to undo it. Start again. Yeah. Right. There's my climbing of shape. That right? looks great. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. That you were so it's right about that pretty. colonial blue, Kate. I had my doubts about that blue. But you <laughs> were, you well, were that's right. one of my 
I am really kind of on a blue kick lately. I don't know if you've been seeing the bags that I've been making, but pretty yeah. much that blue gray is my go. I don't know. It's my go to. Like Maybe the stuff that's... I sent you. I sent you some fabric scrap that I came upon. I hope you liked all that stuff. And yeah. Uh, and you know what? And if I didn't reply to you, it's because I was too busy sorting them out and, um, Plotting what you're going to make next. I'm plotting what I was going to make next with them. I'm sorry. I think I was. No, no. I, 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 I'm glad you. I'm glad you like them. That's yeah, all. I love them. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're already deep in my fabric stash. So. <laughs> all yes. right. So let's um let's talk some other fringes. I'm going to put away these extra beads. Get them off my work. Yeah. Server. And while you're doing that, and while you're preparing that, I'm going to put my. Whoops, it looks like my demo cam actually went out for some reason. Let uh -oh. me see. Huh. And Did actually, my I, phone... I think I want one other sample. I'm going to just turn around here and grab. All my hmm. all my sample boxes are out right now. So. Well, for some reason, I'm going to highlight mine so people can see me. My, my demo camera phone, something is funny with it. So um, that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but I'll show you guys as I'm doing this. Then, Emily, you let me know when you're ready. Okay. Um, I'll hold this up. I've been beating this other sample um, from last week. And so the lariat is coming along. Let me get in the center here. Right? Here's this. And so what we've got, and I'll take my scarf off here for just a second so you guys can see how this is going to go and someone mentioned this earlier i think it was the teller who mentioned it she said she loved my milagro pin this is actually a pin that i that i made and yeah it's the corazon the, the heart but that's a little pin that i made a while back um so that's a nod to emily's um Lusa, my milagro pin <laughs> so you can see if there, if this is the center of my lariat and it's coming down, though the colors don't really match, but let me do this a little bit so you can see this. So if I'm here and I'm here and then I'll have this other hanging one here, I can come in and I could just flip this through. And then you could see I'd be wearing my lariat like so. So I'm almost there with this stringing. And it's just taking my hands a little bit longer to string, I guess. But you can see I've used the uh, Tyla beads here, which is really pretty. Oh. So um, and then this is that's the center. So that's how I might how I might wear it is this way where that center comes in the middle of the neck and then it comes around. You could also just wear it this way if it comes around and here's that loop and then the ends, both ends would come through kind of like this way as well. So it's really, um, it's really pretty, um, I think. And you of course could also just have it hang this way and then have the strands come out so this would be like the center section, and then you could split your threads out and have it be a necklace this way. So there's a lot of ways to um, to work with these guys. And so if you watch the um, episode um, from last Wednesday, you'll see Emily um, uh, create those centers. And we talk a little bit more about, <laughs> sorry, I just was rearranging and I realized <laughs> I was on camera, reaching in, hiking up my straps and, <laughs> put myself back together. So sorry, it's because I feel so comfortable with all of you all. Um, so, uh, so you'll see how that evolved. So Em, I'm going to put your demo camera back on okay. while I reconvobulate myself. Sounds good. And, and uh, there we go. So you're up. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pull, I'm going to lift up a little bit now that I... And Em, uh, there was also some requests that earring that earring that you made based on the feather um yes. that simple brick stitch one yes. would you put um a photo of that in the bead table group for everybody sure. sure and maybe a little just so that they could see it i mean it's pretty much yeah. pretty easy 
um, to follow along, but a nice close up. So if people wanted to recreate it or yeah, take yeah. some inspiration for it, if you wouldn't Absolutely. mind. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, you know, brick stitch was brick stitch was the first seed bead stitch I learned. Um, and I had a, I'll tell you my, my brief beading story. Um, I had discovered Bead and Button Magazine. I had bought a bunch of the back issues and I had one of those weeks or 10 days where I was sick. I had a cold and then I had a strep throat and I had an ear infection or something was wrong with me. There was a bunch of stuff going on. And I finally um, manned up and called in sick for a few days and said, I'm not coming in. Oh. And I sat on my couch and I taught myself how to do brick stitch with really crappy beads, really poor quality um, beads. And it was a struggle, but I, I got it. And then I learned a better way to do brick stitch a few issues later in Bead and Button Magazine. But I kind of never looked back after that. You know, I, I just dove in and I, I really, have, I'm, I'm personally convinced that if you learn one seed bead stitch from written directions, just one, any stitch. Once you have learned one stitch from written directions, you may you will be able to learn others. You need to do it once and successfully complete it. And once you do that, mm -hmm. you will be able to pick up other ones also. And I certainly have. And and the only thing that took multiple tries after that for me was bead crochet, which was really, really hard to learn. And I finally got that as well. But it took about three really good tries. So anyway, brick stitch earrings, one of my favorite things to make in the world. Um, and I have fallen in love with a couple of different types of fringe over the years. One which I kind of consider my Egyptian style fringe where the fringes are all the same. And it's just the sheer mass of them that makes them luxurious and kind of amazing. That's um, so I'm pretty always on the lookout for um, beads that I can incorporate into fringe that would not be too heavy mm -hmm. when at a wide, um, uh, wide across earring. These are actually a tiny little sterling silver saucer bead. And when I say saucer, I mean that they're like a flying saucer. They're fatter like than, a spaceship. The yeah. than on the edges, mm -hmm. right? And that means that to put your needle through them, you absolutely have to go straight through the hole or you hit the other side. So these were a real exercise in frustration to work with, but I just love- Will you hold those a little closer to the camera, Em? Just sure. so, yeah, I wanna see that, right? And so those saucers are little uh, metal saucers, right, yeah. silver? Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're delicious. We will never delicious. buy those beads again because I- No, wanted... we will never, those, those beads will never find this way again. No, uh, never again. Um, but again, this became to me, what I really loved about this was the opulence of it. When you multiplied it, the same thing by a lot, the mm -hmm. more the merrier give, gave me that feeling of really rich, lush uh, fringe. And the same thing could be done with a very small pearl. Um, again, those are very pretty. Um, it has that same kind of an, oops, a little bit of an Egyptian feel. There's this repeating pattern but there's a real nice fluffiness to them with the width of those pearls kind of pushing things around. Um, these seed beads, unfortunately, are not color safe. They've changed. And are those, were those Delicas or were those Rocals? Those are Delicas, and I think they're, mm -hmm. um, I think they're like a copper lined. I think that's what it is. Oh, and, and so that copper lined sometimes, yeah. yeah. But it just adds to kind of the vintage Mm -hmm. kind of feel mm -hmm. of those yeah um i just love they're beautiful. that kind of you know opulent feeling fringe mm -hmm. and at one point once upon a time i found some really great plastic beads which again um these little daisy shaped flower beads are actually plastic and they have a little bit of gold paint in them which makes them i think really fun but it allowed me to have a lot for not much weight um, so I was mm -hmm. always pretty conscious of, of how that worked. Um, and in this, again, that very simple, straightforward fringe, um, this doesn't have a pico, it just has three beads at the end with a little turnaround. One bead is the turnaround bead. And it gives you that, that real opulent, kind of rich, fluffy feeling from them, right? And super light. Very pretty. 
Right. Which is the Very first time pretty. I ever thought I would really like plastic. Um, those of you who did the netted bead, uh, this is actually the same pattern that the netted bead is made from. And we haven't mm -hmm. actually done this one, Kate, as a lariat. So this is a lariat. No, we should. Pattern. Yeah. Very simple. Um, this was in an early bead and button magazine as well. Um, and I made a very simple looped fringe through a nice Venetian glass bead with some bead caps on it. Um, and so very this pretty. The same sort of thing happened. I went up and down and made that looped fringe. But I, I think again that, that this tassel end would be bare without something like this at the mm -hmm. bottom. It would have even been longer. And the, the, um, the, netted bead that you're talking about we can mm -hmm. find that you can find that you guys in in the broadcast it's archived on beadshop.com it's a really fun one i keep going back to those netted beads and i'm slowly building up my collection of them i just love to make them can you raise that a little bit higher and just so we can really see that closure kind of close yeah there we go um so this is the, the a long strand that i tie around my neck one time loop it around mm -hmm. tie it's in the front. really pretty yeah and then this is is this two colors of mm, seed beads color. that you've got going on one color it just mm -hmm. looks so luscious because maybe it's a silver lined or something it is it's a silver lined. um you know this is kind of getting involved in seed beads which we don't always talk too much about um mm -hmm. this particular seed bead is um a seed bead that has a square hole on it so oh. you seed, your, most of your seed beads, they have a round hole. And mm -hmm. when they get a square hole, you actually get sort of a faceted appearance. So you get yeah. a lot more color reflecti reflectivity, a lot more sparkle mm -hmm. from it. I like to use these when I make my beaded Christmas trees. So I'm, I am one of those particular customers who calls and says, hi, I'm interested in this bead. Can you tell me? <laughs> is the whole <laughs> turn around <laughs> and then they, right. they look. Um, because they'll sometimes be the same color, but sometimes they come square, sometimes they mm -hmm. come square. So, and you uh, could also use like a cut bead to sort of that same effect, right? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then in that case, I would want to use some um, uh, fire line, fire line, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like my camera yeah. froze there for just a second, but I just brought it back, I think. Yeah, no, you're good. Okay. Looks great. That's very pretty. Yeah, it's a fun one. Um, you know, and I have always over the years loved to do peyote stitch. Um, and this is a, a project from an intro to peyote stitching class where I show you how to make the pattern in the peyote stitch. Then we do the daisy pattern. And, you know, it's a little bare at the bottom. So we added some really pretty fringe, um, playing again with uh, some bead shapes to kind of add to those fringes. And this incorporates pearls as well. Um, to mm -hmm. kind of some some fun options, um, and in this case, I didn't fringe all the way across the the fringe uh, the bottom. I just fringed at the bottom, the like bottom corners, but using mm -hmm. shaped beads in there to to kind of give you some um, embellishment space. You know? And that's all peyote stitch, Emily. Right? Mm -hmm. That's not loom. Yeah. You and yeah. I have talked about doing a split loom necklace. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, nineteen eighty. Yeah, yeah, 1998 called. They want their split loom necklace back. Right, right. Wait a minute. Wait <laughs> I a like minute. it. Wait a minute. I like it. What about wait, a, wait, uh, part? How about a uh, how about a how about an amulet bag? Yes. Can I show you my very first called. amulet bag I ever made, Kate? They want their amulet bag. Will you put that a little closer to the camera, M, so we can all see that? That is really lovely. Isn't it pretty? I mean, I yeah, thought it was really pretty if I do say so myself. Yeah, it's, it's very pretty. Um, peyote in the round, which is another thing we have not yet done. Yeah, so which I there. like to do. I like peyote it's stitching good. around a lot. Yeah. yeah. And very simple fringe, but by level. So I alternated right. short and long and have um, lots and lots of little black daggers at the bottom to give it lots mm -hmm. of time. It's really, again, it also has that vintage feel to it. Very and I pretty. ended up with, I incorporated a little daisy, black daisy flower in here. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, that one's really nice. Up. I remember wearing that to yeah. the Bay Area Bead Society show and being super proud of myself. Right, um, wearing your... I finally had an yeah. amulet bag to wear. Yeah. And here's another... Yeah, will you maybe... 
Yeah, get it like a little, yeah, a little even as close as we can, so we can really see that detail. Yeah, there we go. So here's a choice of making a fringe um, that is a little bit uh, thinner in texture, but it makes up for it in some really amazing beads in it. And this is actually a lampwork bead that I made. Yeah, you did. Right? Which is sort of purple and bronze. Very pretty. And those are, uh, heck, those are cuts too, right? These are triangles. Oh, triangles. Yeah, triangles. Yeah. Now, those square beads or the square hold rounds, um, are those yeah. Japanese or are they Czech? Uh, Japanese. Okay. Yeah, we don't carry those, but I'm sure you guys can do a little search um, and find some. That's great. Now, that's the netting. I've seen that one when we were going to talk about doing some of that. The this netting is a right angle weave. Mm hmm And I did very short loopy fringes on one edge. Mm hmm Right? Very pretty. Right angle weave is fun, you know, because it gives you the opportunity to do all kinds of fringing on all different sides. And here's another um, amulet bag with a pair on it. Um, right. Because where I was working and teaching up in Kelseyville, they have a big affinity for pears. So I used right. some pear Hence your pear festival mix. Hence your pear festival mix. I used some pear shaped beads in the fringes um, to give it some some uh, extra extra pairiness. And pears up there, Bartlett pears are usually in this kind of color scheme as they get picked and then they ripen into yellow. Yeah, very uh, pretty. And then I saved for last. I don't know if I've ever shown this for you guys, you guys before. <laughs> well, this is my. You know, it's our it's our favorite flower, Emily. Will you uh, let's clear the decks for this one? Okay, hold on. I I I want people to really. There we go. Let's give us the um. The full treatment. Yeah. I don't know if I've showed you guys this before or not. I don't, I don't know if I have or not. It's this is my beaded handbag. These are nasturtiums. And I Oh, I thought they were California poppies, but they are nasturtiums. You're right. They're nasturtiums. Yeah. Yes. I um I took a ribbon and I don't think I had it. I used to save it in there, but um I took a piece of ribbon and I scanned it into a computer program and duplicated it three times and then had it make a graph for me to loom from. And this Hold that up right to the camera um, so we can see the beads. It looks like you used Rocals Delicous. and not Delicas. Nope, Delicas. Oh, you did use Delicas. Okay. Yep. I just, oh, I can't no. quite tell. And then in the top, what you did was you, it, you kind of have some slits beaded in. Right. Um, and that becomes for the, the Yeah, it's... It's seriously impressive. This is 106 beads across. <laughs> wow. And each of the threads that came out between the beads, I wove back in. Wow. So that was 212 threads. Maybe maybe even more like 214 because there were some on the edges. And um, so that was a lot of threading needles and weaving things back in. And that's how I can always thread a needle because I've done, I did this, I did 10, I would do 10 threads a night before I would do any other beading and finally got it done. And it was like a massive amount of work. Is it lined M? It is. Yeah. It has a little linen lining and it, the lining hangs on the drawstring so it doesn't pull on the bead work. You're just, that's just ridiculous. It's gorgeous. Really and pretty. Because I got to that point, um, the fringe is just a very simple looped fringe. Um, I yeah. got so I was so tired and so done that um, I decided to be very simple on myself. Take it easy. Yeah. Right. Well, and it goes with it really nicely. I mean, it actually yeah. it very nicely. And then this is one that um, I actually carry to parties and stuff. Um, yeah, it's really party. beautiful. So. Um, how long did that uh did that as people are saying labor of love uh how <laughs> I, long did you was, work I on think that it was over a year and some a year yeah yeah i would i would say good. yeah yeah uh, you know and it wasn't something that i worked on every single day um because right. doing a row was a lot 
And yeah. I was really lucky in my pattern that any little baubles that I made in the row, and long as there wasn't an orange bead out here in the white, it was fine. You know, you'd yeah. never know that I made a, um, a, a small error. So I had yeah. chosen wisely um, for that, yeah. that process. Well, it's really very, it's lovely. Yeah. Really lovely. Like it. It's only four colors. Um, yeah. which makes life, you know, a little easier. I think it's four, maybe it's five, one, two, three, four. it's five, sorry, five colors. Yeah. And at one point I ran out of the white and had to get more. It was a different dye lot. So that was exciting. Right. Yeah. Um, always good times. Always, always good times. Good yeah. Times. Yeah. But luckily you can't see where that happened. So yeah. Phew. Yeah. No, it's, exactly. it's gorgeous. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, any, um, I'm just kind of looking for comments. This one really blew the socks off. Um, that one was a great oh, one to end with. That's why I saved it for last. Yeah, um, it's great. Yeah. Well, I'm going to uh, bring us, bring you and I up on the screen. Okay. Hello. So we can uh, bring this broadcast to a close. Let me remove that. And then let me remove that. And there we are. Okay. Well, yeah, sip of water. There you go. That was that was great. Um, well, I learned a lot in this fringe compendium. Thank you so much for all of that sharing. Sure. I'm so close to the end. Oh yeah, of our, I'm almost there. Almost there to to close <laughs> it off. So, um, so Karen will have this up on the project page, so everybody um, will be able to see it. Um, but what a great um, what a great piece that last well, one was. All of them. It's really fun to kind of get to look at things carefully and and do it in mm -hmm. a. Uh, I mean, definitely, we were talking about things in a in a particular scheme. You know, we were looking at fringe. We could have been looking at mm -hmm. bead styles. We could have been looking at right. You know, a bunch of different things. So, um, I think this no, was, it was, was worthwhile to have that deep dive into the fringe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, no. And, definitely and take a look at everything. Um, so I appreciate having that extra time, Kate, um, to do that today. Yeah, no, of course. It was so worthwhile. I think we all learned so much. I think that you and I will have a discussion about what our next seed bead school is going to be because people are already mm -hmm. hankering. So we'll put it on the books for some time closer to the summer because I know yeah. you're really busy. I wanted to um, just let you plug yourself real quick. And oh, yes. I know you're doing a lot of markets online, yeah. um, not yeah. online, but in-person markets yeah. and stuff where you are in kind of the Northern California area. So where can people find you if they want to see um, you in person? Currently, I'm at the Sacramento um, uh, Midtown Farmer's Market. Mm -hmm. They do have a website and they have an Instagram, Midtown Farmers Market, shockingly enough. Um, mm -hmm. And um, you're certainly welcome to come see me there on Saturdays. The only thing that cancels for me is rain. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. I'll do wind, fog, light rain, but real rain, mm -hmm, sorry. I'm not going to yeah, spend not so time, much. You know, drawing, drawing yeah. things out. Um, and yeah. uh, it's Saturdays from 8 to 1. It's a beautiful location. It's a great farmers market. Wonderful other artisans to their um that I'm, I'm lucky to be, be in company with such a good gang. Um, so I'd love to see you if you're in the area, please stop by. Um, yeah, and people can follow you. Uh, oh yeah, it's, it's weather is gorgeous right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can find your jewelry also on your Insta, Emily yeah. uh, Emily B. Miller Jewelry. I'm doing um, to I've got better that on the posting screen. there. Um, I think what I'm going to try and do is post the day before. <laughs> it yeah. got so busy last week. I, I took pictures while I was in the booth, and I didn't actually have time to post it till afterwards. Right. So, yeah. um, well, it's great. I think that's going to be a lesson um, for this week from here on out is to post on Friday <laughs> so that I make sure everybody catches it. Um, That's right. Well, you have such a great compendium of all of the stuff that you're making. It's really a fantastic line. It's great to see it. So I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I, I make my jewelry for myself. You know, I've really found that if nothing else, I'm having to really be true to my own aesthetic and it's not for everyone and that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I, I've, I've kind of come around to that now after the years of trying to make things that other, I thought other people would like, I don't do that. anymore. Yeah. No, I know. Me neither. You know, just yeah. you do your jewelry and if people dig it, they dig it. If right. they don't, well, there's another jewelry stall on down the way. Yeah, there's, a, there's, there's at least three of us there. So um, yeah, right. right. So 
I also want to say, Maggie said, um, I don't know if you've used it, M, but I wanted to put it up on here. There's a free app that transfers any image into looming patterns called Bead Tool. I've used Bead Tool. I think you have yeah. too, haven't you? I actually haven't used it, but it's been a, a little minute since I've had to do any um, uh, mm -hmm. real graphing that way. Um, mm -hmm. I do have a little, have a little something I'm working on, and I'll, I'll try and finish it up. It kind of got put to the side with whatever else was going on this last three weeks. Right. Um, but I wanted to show you kind of a MacGyver way of drafting to a graph, if you wanted to draft something to a graph. Um, and oh, cool. using something that you find that you like uh, or or your own drawing or inspiration um, of a way to kind of do that at home with kind of low tech. Um, oh, great. But, yeah, well, maybe programs are awesome. And maybe you can share that over in the bead table bead group. That would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's where it was headed. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, we will see you again soon for more Seed Bead School. Thank you, M, so you. much. Stay safe. You can ask on. We are almost there. That's right. Almost there. I've got mine right here. I wanted to um, also put up, you guys, that uh, we have for April, if you haven't seen it, it's on our homepage, uh, our April um, promotion this month. You can save at different levels at Diamond 10, Diamond 15, and Diamond 20. 10% off of 35, 15% off of $50 a minimum purchase and 20% off a minimum purchase of 100. And that's gonna go through the middle of April on April 15th. So uh, if you're watching this live or you're watching this around that date, uh, you'll be able uh, to use that on everything at beadshop.com. And of course, um, you can find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. Sign up for our newsletter, you guys, for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. We are doing next week, we have a trunk show coming up on Friday and it will start on Friday. Uh, let me make sure I get my dates right. So I've got to move my calendar over. Friday the 9th, which is a week from today and we're gonna have a special guest on um, talking about her pieces for the trunk show. Someone we haven't had on before, so it'll be really exciting. So stay tuned to your newsletters because there'll be more information about that coming up next week. And of course, you can find us all on our social. You can follow us at beadshop.com on our Instagram. Um, at on our Facebook group, The Bead Table. We'd love to have you join us there. And if you're watching and haven't done it so, done so already, hit the like and subscribe button on our um, YouTube channel. Those likes and subscriptions that you give us really helps um, other beaters find us um, and keeps us flowing along with all of this great content that we know you guys love so much. So, Em, I'm going to put you back on and we will sign off here there we are um we will see you um soon we'll make another plan and we'll do some more seed beads together hopefully and hopefully we'll be in person soon too that's what i'm saying so That'll soon really great me right you right there me and you and a martini right. and, and a, oyster, some oysters that's what i that's what people are talking about in the in the chat i'm there I'm with you. All right, everybody, stay safe. Have a fantastic weekend. Happy Easter to those of you who celebrate. And I will see you next week. Um, we've got something fun cooked up for you on Wednesday and then Friday for uh, the Trunk Show on our regular Friday broadcast. So thanks again, Em. We'll see everybody Bye. soon. Take care. Thanks, everyone. You bet.